what really off bomb means is to build up. There is now no more space in this energy level two making this spherical orbital. So now we're onto these p orbitals. And what a p orbital does, is it looks like this. So if I draw my first p orbital, and we'll draw this in the y direction here, that electron is going to end up up here and kind of down here. Um, and it won't you go into these other areas of three dimensional space. So when you get to the next step, when you do boron, you have a new orbital. But p orbitals, are there's going to be three of them because they face in the x, y, z direction. So they're going to be called a sublevel. So right away, you're going to want to draw all three boxes, even though we won't need them all. Because again, we only have five electrons. So one, two, three, four, pair them opposite because of Pauli. And then that electron is going to occupy its own new sublevel, um, which is the p sublevel, but it's still an energy level two. The other thing you might see is chemists may put these atomic numbers on the side so that you know how many electrons you should have. So one, two, three, four, five. So the shorter version of this is drawing out the electron configuration. And we're adding in a new um, orbital. So you have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. So we have um, energy level 2 still being filled. And then energy level 1 was completely filled. The short version of this is helium, 2s2, 2p1. And if we keep going on our periodic table, you would have helium, 2s2, 2p1. It's going to get tricky to fit it on there if you don't have a really fine tip marker. And now we actually have three valence electrons. There's one, two, three, or I can show you on this one. There's two here and one there, so you add both of those because they're both energy level two. So it has three, so you'll do a dot, and I'll put a dot at the top and a dot at the side. So I still have one more spot to fill when I get to carbon. So if I go completely backwards again with carbon, I'm going to try to go a little quicker now since hopefully you may be seeing the pattern. With um, a new rule, it's called Hun's rule. The next orbital to fill will actually be another p orbital in what's called the x direction. And this is going to be something called Hun's rule in that it's that when you have these equal energy um, p orbitals, which are called a sublevel, the electrons will fill one at a time first. So in this picture, carbon will look like this. It'll have a box, a box, and again, three boxes possible. And those are the 2p, the 2s, and the 1s. So you'll have one, two, three, four, and again, we're trying to get to six, five, and six. And this again is something called Hun's rule. It's that you unpair before you pair at that energy level and the equal sublevel. And then when you summarize it with this, with an electron configuration, you'll do this. And then when you go to a uh, noble gas, you'll have helium, 2s2. So there's two electrons making that shape and two electrons in separate p orbitals, which is now um, a total of four valence. And then again, sneak this on your periodic table so you can start to see that there's a pattern. That would have four valence. So finally, we have one dot on each side of that carbon atom. If we go backwards all the way to the start again, we finally will fill one more p orbital that faces in the z direction. This is going kind of in and out of your paper like that. So this will this would be the atom now um, nitrogen because we have seven electrons. What you might see too is to be faster. Chemists sometimes just put lines, and then instead of showing um, an arrow like normal, you do a, what is called a half-headed arrow. And again, Hun's rule would say put an electron in each of its own 2p orbitals. So this one, for example, I'm right over here. So I'm just going to zoom in on that. This would be called the p-y, um, maybe. This one right here would be called the p, um, so 2p-y, 2p-x, and 2p-z. And we're going to put one electron in each first. And then those two orbitals are filled. For nitrogen, you'd have 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. You really can't see that those are unpaired. And then, again, very um, building up, which again is what that off bomb means. You'd have 2s2, 2p3. On your periodic table, you'd have helium, 2s2, 2p3. You'd be now at 5 valence because, again, if you go back to here, you have 2 plus 3, which is 5. So then finally, you're going to end up pairing um, some dots on the same side. So I'm going to put two dots on this side and one, two, three that are unpaired. 
And again, if I go back and start all over again, you just keep kind of following the pattern. Right now though, we have um, P orbitals that can still be filled. So what we're gonna do now is with these P orbitals, again, they can each hold two. So now we're ready to put a second one in each of those. So I'm not gonna come back to this picture. Um, I'm gonna just start filling the orbital diagrams and the um, electron configurations. So for these, I'm gonna do these all at the same time. So you have one S for all of them, two S for all of them, and then a two P, and there's three of those. And then you have seven, eight, nine, and 10 number of electrons. So you'd fill one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the eighth one will go in a paired. Same with fluorine, except for you have one more electron, so then here you'd end up with two that are paired. And then finally, when you hit neon, you would have all of those p orbitals with two electrons in each. Last, you would list them as 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, 1s2, 2s2, 2p5, and 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. The shorthand is really not that much shorter. Um, then we'll go back to the periodic table. You have helium as what's called the core electron um, count, and then these are the valence electrons here out in the outermost energy level, and you can see that they just keep increasing by one more valence every time. So you'll have six, seven, and then eight. Um, and again, all of these are gonna have helium, and then 2s2, 2p4, helium, 2s2, 2p5, and then finally helium, 2s2, 2p6. Six, seven, and eight valence, and again, as you're doing these dot structures, you do um, unpair before you pair, and I'm just gonna pair those on each side like that. For fluorine, we would end up having um, three sides with pairs, and then for neon, all four sides of this symbol sort of have a paired up electron. So I hope that helped, and those are just the first 10, and we'll move on to the um, atoms that are bigger than that, and hopefully at some point these two pictures that you have in your book will make more sense. And again, you'll end up continuing this pattern, and if you get all the way out to a 5G, you just keep adding another energy orbital every level.